Hi, I'm Sinead. And I'm Nita. And today we are cooking up a storm. I well, don't cook it, but we're definitely going to chop it up. <laughs> wondering what on earth are we talking about, well, don't worry, we think the same thing most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, but today we wanted to really show you a couple of cool uses for the Silky Axe range. So we've got the hatchet, the Nata hatchets. And we've got the Ono Axe. Yeah. So ordinarily you think Axe wood and yep, definitely these are designed <laughs> to cut wood. But we're going to sort of mix it up a bit today for you and show a few other things. So Sinead's going to be chopping up. But I'm going to be chopping up fruit, so we've got a rock melon here, and just for interest sake, a mandarin. <laughs> so we just found it in the bag, so we thought, oh, I'm going to chop that up too. <laughs> it could cause a major mess in this room, so we might live to regret this video. <laughs> Come over for fruit salad. <laughs> fruit salad with a bit of raw meat, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I'm going to be cutting up some meat and some bone, so we'll talk about that a bit later, and then we might finish the meal with some timber. Yes. <laughs> up the wood fire chicken wings now <laughs> now what we've got here we've got a few different types of timber depending on depending on what situation you are in especially for camping hiking full driving so we have dry and hard timbers and we're going to make a shovel we're going to make tent pegs wind barrier whatever we can remember from our survival trip <laughs> so we will do that at the end so yes. first up we got the fruit yeah first up so <laughs> we will blend it you want us pretty gonna make the most mess yeah so, you know what? Let's be fun. <laughs> so, so, I'm going to select the nutter. So, we're going to chop this straight. So, this is going to make you, I think, the coolest person on the beach or in the campground. Yeah. If you bring out the watermelon or the rock melon or whatever <laughs> melon you got and you start chopping it up for a real. <laughs> so, I've got I've got the silky nutter hatchet and I this is the actually double-edged one so it means it's sink, um, beveled on both sides. So and I'm, what length is that you've got? This one is the 240, so 24 oh. centimeter um, blade basically and mm -hmm. it has a special gun rubber handle but besides the point because this is fun! <laughs> so what we're going to do here is... And we totally didn't practice this so let's go! <laughs> Why not? <gasps> that worked really well! <laughs> So we've cut it, we got a... Oh. So Sinead wasn't sure how violent she should be, I reckon she should have hit it with a little more anger. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it again. Oh. <laughs> same spot. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> Living dangerously here. There we go, so we have a perfectly cut... Um, so just like when a silky melon. saw cuts a branch, it's perfectly smooth. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to smash it straight down the centre of it again. Oops, it easy. So now we have a quarter of a rock melon. You want to try it? It's really cool. Okay, I'm going to do some now. <laughs> you so want to come in and share in this one. This is our, what did, what did we say? Rock Suki. melon. No, what was it? We, we made a little like nickname for our cooking show today. Um, what is it? Make it look so much better than I do. <laughs> it's because I watched you. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to try a different technique. To like massacre the chopping board yeah, at the same time because we've got like a couple of other things to cut up too. So we'll get rid of all the seeds. This is actually really, really so cool. So it's actually doing the best job, and we're probably making it look a little bit unco because we, we are unco. <laughs> and we've never done this before. We're just like, what a great idea. We're gonna do like, like this we'll cooking show. And we, we did, we had this name for it. It was. <laughs> This is our cooking show, My Silky Rules. Yeah, so <laughs> not above average. That's right. That we have totally not practiced off a bit. <laughs> so we are getting just as, as uh, surprised as you are. All right, yeah. so I'm going to do one more one more try before Sinead might want to try with a bit more uh, frustration on her side. No. And it really actually is giving a beautiful cut. Yes, it is. So, Silky smooth. Yeah, when you go camping next, you don't need to take a big knife to cut up the watermelon Susan or Susan. anything else we're going to show you later. You can just use your knife. So what we have done here, obviously, is I have something we prepared earlier. Is oh, we did. We prepared something earlier. <laughs> we washed this with warm soap oh, yeah, water we totally before we cut any of it because 
of just health and safety reasons. Well, in saying that though, you know, our easy cleaner that we clean everything with is perfectly natural oh, and fine. True. It just, you know, tea tree oil and a rock melon might not be so bad. Try. I mean, you might be into that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could like cut it smaller with one of the other ones sideways yeah, or something. Yeah, so you could just easily, yeah, cut it. So this is the, what is this, the 180 or the, the one? The 180 single beveled one, so it means yes. it's only single beveled on one side. Yes. <laughs> so you can see it's a flat surface, Yes. and then it's beveled on one side, but we'll put up a close up later. So yeah, it's just that violent side of things. And so. even when I was whacking it, I was worried I was going to destroy this chopping board. Um, so, but it actually, I can't even see hardly any marks in it, so no. it's pretty sweet. Just up the top here, I've got a little when the, like, the tip went in, but yeah, yeah that was brilliant. Alright, so that's rock melon aside. I'm going to do that uh, mandarin that's probably going to squirt everywhere. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Becca's rock melon. <laughs> oh, this is so hard because it's like... Oh, okay, that's the side of the <laughs> mandarin. Maybe the ono. Use the ono. It smells like my gins. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, I have an idea just to like try and help this pinging across the floor like the rock melon just did. There we go. There we go. Ready. The Ono Axe. I feel like I should cover my eyes. <laughs> oh, that wow. is fine. That is really, really good. Huh. You could put that on the edge of a cocktail. I know. So there you go. Should you want to Make chop up cocktails? <laughs> chop up a mandarin for your cocktail, just get out your Ono Axe. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm going to start my own business now. <laughs> okay, so many cocktails. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so I am going to cut uh, up some meat. So, uh, first, we'll grab our gloves. Yeah, I think we might do that because the fruit's one thing to have under your fingernails, but uh, chicken wings mm. is another thing for the rest of the day because we've done this in the morning, so we've got to stay here till 5 o'clock tonight. <laughs> So why am I cutting up meat, you might say? Why am I uh, absorbing your life by making you watch a video of us chomping up fruit? Well, it was fun to begin with. But secondly, oh look, I've got the backward glove. I think, I think I've just done the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is we have customers who have done all of the things except the Mandarin. That was simply a great idea that we're showing you today. Um, so, <laughs> so you might also wish to do this. Now, the chicken wings, we have a customer who, um, feeds his dog, so it's not a big dog, chicken wings. So the chicken wing in its full form, and oh look, and this is frozen form too, because half frozen. Okay, so we've got the chicken wings here, and I did take these out of the freezer last night, but they are still slightly frozen. But anyway, that's just a bit more challenging for the axes. But anyway, this customer, he, um, he likes to have the chicken wings cut up a bit smaller for his little doggy, so he uses his nada, or okie, okay, I forget which one he's got, but anyway, one of the axes to do it. So, we thought we would show you what it will look like, how it will work, if we chomp up some half frozen chicken wings. So, let's give it a go. Okay, so you have to use slightly more violence than the fruit, because you're cutting through frozen meat, because I didn't take it out of the freezer. And bones. And bones. Wow, that's For something that's frozen. Whoa! Is. Yeah, so it's actually not hard at all, but it's just figuring out what pressure you want to actually put on the meat. Yeah, because exactly. we've just done fruit, and that was like obviously super soft in the center and so then sort of firmer on the side. Yeah. Yeah, so to figure out the right uh, the right pressure. Okay, try and dislodge another chicken wing because they're all frozen together. <laughs> Hi, buddy! <laughs> totally want me to massacre you. Okay, okay. We can do this. Oh, found one. Okay, this one. is a big one. Wow. Okay. There we there go. There we go. Oh, go and eat it. <laughs> okay, easy. Peasy. You get now, it. You I'm got just, it. <laughs> I'm just wondering how the Ono can be glad we started with the, uh, the fruit because I definitely would want to get the fruit up now. Okay, I'm just going to try the Ono. Oh, wow, the Ono! The Ono was way easier. Okay, yes. if you are cutting up chicken wings, 
for your dog that is semi-frozen, go the Ono. Oh, so easy. Oh, it's like butter. Stop it. I'm going to do My chicken wings. <laughs> you had the fruit. <laughs> I got some, I got some, what have I got? Some drumsticks. You can have the drumsticks. Hi. Okay, I just got to do one more because that was so easy. I'm just going to make sure it wasn't like a fluke. Yeah, that was a bonus. Oh, <laughs> so easy. Like, that doesn't even, I don't even have to, woo. <laughs> I don't even have to like push hard with the nutter I was sort of using a bit of force and sort of had to figure out you know like hitting it at the same like mm -hmm. the straightness had to match the the chopping board but with the reckon, Ono do you reckon it's you, just so easy yeah. do you reckon with the Ono it's because it's a shorter blade you feel like you have more control over what you are doing and I think um, My eyebrow. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you two alone. <laughs> I think because all the weight is centered here, it's really easy to distribute that weight when it's chopping. Sort of, you know, like this. Super simple. So, yeah, my pick definitely if I'm cutting meat up would be the Ono, but Sinead's gonna get her opinion. So, I know. Ready. Oh, wow! That's really good. Slices through these drumsticks and, oops, easy, and straight through the bone right here. Okay. Wow. This is good, awesome. isn't it? But compare it to the nutter to give you an idea, just so I don't look so uncovered. No. Thanks, Donnie. Let's grab a piece. Agree. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because it's the long rectangle, the weight spread across the length of that blade. Should we try the single bevel? Yeah, we bevel could, one? yeah, because I only tried the big one, didn't I? Yeah, so we'll try the single bevel. Or, oh no, all the way. Yeah, and see, this is the same as the wings. It's like half frozen, half yeah. decored. So you can see that it does cut straight through that bone, it just doesn't completely it's cut just it all the way. It's more awkward through. to get that weight going all the way through to the end. Cuts it real good though. Mm. Chicken skin. <laughs> That's the biggest <laughs> challenge for these knives. That's it. Not the bone. Not the hard meat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's just wanting me to be totally oh, covered in raw <laughs> chicken by the end of this show. You cut one of the I'm just, sticks. I'm just going to wipe that chicken off. <laughs> I'm not <a> sorry. <laughs> oh, whose idea was this? Yeah. All right. Man. It actually was our beautiful coffee man that comes and visits us each day said you need to do a My Silky Rules cooking show and we were like, what a brilliant idea. We'll see at the end of the day how I smell it, it was such a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, my turn. Maybe you're nervous holding that. You lose your finger, you film it all. <laughs> That's right, it'll be on film, it's totally worth it. That was really easy, that was good. That was really good. And you know, it does, it just gives the nicest cut. Like, look at that. That is a great cut. So, not that my dogs will here, but still, brilliant cut. <laughs> and easy. Like, you know, if you did this regularly, I reckon you'd be such a pro. It'd be so quick. Yeah. So quick and easy. Okay, so the other thing we wanted to talk about, which would have been, like, so much easier had I actually defrosted these properly. Let me find one that's a bit softer. Okay, this one. So, obviously, we're in a... We're at, cutting up food, um, fruit to eat, just for the fun of it really, um, but also for feeding dogs. So we've got that sort of done and dusted. But there's people that want saws or tools to use in a hunting situation. So say you were camping or you were surviving and you need to cut food up to eat, then obviously you could do that easily with these axes. But in a hunting situation you need to cut through to maybe make something smaller so you can carry it and get it back to camp or your vehicle. Um, and we have one of the guys that works with us, he makes his own fish emulsion. So he chops up fish carcasses and brews it together with all sorts of other things and makes fantastic fertilizers. And he uses the Silky Pocket Boys to do that. Yeah. And the Pocket Boys is often one of the saws we'll recommend to mm -hmm. a hunter to take with them to cut up, you know, a beast yeah. of some descriptions. So we would normally, we would <clears throat> um, choose a extra fine tooth saw. Um, just well, depending on how fleshy it is though. True, true, true. Yeah. So you, the fine tooth is for the more like bone? 
side of things. Yeah. yeah. So let's cut through like the bone. Oh, and the other thing that's great with the um, the pocket boy, if you were doing it in like, you know, that, as I say, the guy that works with us situation, he's working on a bench like we are. He's got a chopping board and he's working on that. So a normal saw would make it a bit awkward yeah. to do that. So this setting the pocket boy has is great because it allows you to cut flat to the surface. So we will show you what it's like to cut through the bone. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Because we see photos and we like hear people talking about it and how gentle. they use the pocket boy to cut up these meats for a particular mm. sort, but it's incredible to see it actually being used, and that's one of the reasons why we do this video is to basically show you that this yeah. is what it can be used for. And so that I went did it really slowly then to really feel what I was doing, and it went through that that skin and that little bit of flesh Cut and then the bone, super easy. Yeah, really easy. Okay, do it more on a fattier bit. How so on a fattier bit, would we use the saw or would we go up and pop a boy? I reckon we will go up and pop a boy. Okay, cool. So well, do you, you want to do, show them that one? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've got here, so you need to have the extra fine tooth and yep. I've got the fine tooth pocket boy. And just to confuse you, if you go into a shop to buy the fine tooth pocket boy. It's not yellow. <laughs> it's, it's not yellow, it's got a blue handle. They've upgraded the colour for the fine tooth. So when we're talking um, meaty things, uh, you know, we often with sauce talk about <laughs> talk about uh, how how wet the timber is. Well, in this case, if it's wet as in flesh, um, you want a larger tooth so that it doesn't clog up really easily. Okay, so pretending we've hunted this beast, <laughs> now we're going to cut it up. Remembering the silky is only cut on the pull stroke, so your only real pressure you're putting on it is towards yourself. I'm probably hiding the shot like that. Done and dust. No Cuts problem. Meat. So that was really meaty, meaty this yeah. section. So, you know, that's quite soft flesh for the saw to be going through. So ideally that's a challenging kind of situation, really. And then the bit of bone in the middle was no problem yeah. at all. So bone really for each tooth size was a cinch, wasn't it? Yeah, so the hardest part for the saw to go through was the soft Skin. That yep. was really the most challenging part. But when it gets to the bone, it's good. Yeah, and the, the meat really, as long as we had a bit of firmness to it, was easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Except your thumb. I'm watching it. No thumbs. No thumbs be cut. <laughs> human fingers, human flesh, and bones is no problem. Done. Easy peasy. So, yeah, so the key, the most important thing to remember about every silky saw is that they cut on the pull string. Mm. In a branch, tree, meat. Only cut on the pull stroke, so put um, more pressure on the pull stroke than your pushing stroke. Mm. And I think it's also um, let the saw do the work. When we were yeah. sort of playing with these, because um, we cut a few shots out, so you're not super super bored. Uh, <laughs> when we sort of, I guess, tried to do it quickly or tried to fight with the meat, it made it much harder. But as yeah. when we just did it as relaxed and as sort of um, light as possible cutting, it made it so much easier to cut through the meat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So let the saw do the work. Always remember it's on the pull string and use the full length of the blade too because at one point we were trying to cut these drumsticks sort of just with really little strokes and that made it a lot harder than just using that full length of the blade. So kind of like a knife I guess, yeah. use those full <clears throat> long strokes and it'll be so much easier. So in a hunting situation, the axe is brilliant, the pocket boy is brilliant, in cutting up meat for the dogs, brilliant. Cutting up fruit, brilliant. Now we do have one other meat situation we were going to show you here. A delicious rolled frozen chicken thing. So the idea was, and I have had customers and even myself have done this, sometimes you'll go to the supermarket and they'll have like, I don't know, mince or something on special and you'll be like, yeah, I'll get like a heap of that. When I get home, I'll like separate it all and put it in little bags so that I've got the perfect amount for each meal. Very then we get efficient. Yeah, yeah, totally. But then you get home, it's called all good intentions. <laughs> and somebody's come to visit or you got distracted and you ended up throwing the whole thing in the freezer. Then you have like a 10 kilo slab of mince that you don't need to cook all at once. But it's frozen, so you can't not cook it all at once. However, if you own a silky, well, actually, we'll, we'll try both. We'll show you what the saw's like and the axe. So if you have a silky pocket boy, we're going to take this. Nope, we're just going to cut it with the string on it because uh, it's all going to fall apart. <laughs> so we're just going to we're just going to go for it. Like we said, we practiced none of this beforehand. But the idea is this. She knows. <laughs> she knows. Oh no, I do. <laughs> all right, you good? 
<laughs> nah. No, mine's a cheek. <laughs> it's like right there, like. Okay, you go. <laughs> uh, suck it up, it's gone. <laughs> That's a dish. <laughs> <laughs> you would like to eat this entire roulade you can't so we have a silky pogapoy so we do not need to despair we simply glide it through it cuts the rope no problems at all it cuts through the meat no problems at all keep your fingers well away from that blade and do it like driving Miss Daisy gentle as so that you don't go all crazy aggressive and then end up chopping some part of your body or the kitchen that you don't want to and that will cut through it no problem at all. Voila, two beautiful pieces of chicken that will probably make a massive mess in your oven because it's now in half. But the point is, whatever meat you have in the freezer that is too big that you want to only use half of it, if you have a silky pocket boy, you can do that. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> So that is it for our episode of My Silky Rules, and I think it truly did rule. Yes. The dogs have chicken to eat, we have fruit for morning tea, a interestingly cut up mandarin. So we didn't do the specs, we've done other videos which go on the specs of these, these axes. We just wanted today to give you some ideas of what you might use yours for, how cool they are and how well they work, even yeah. when amateurs like ourselves are using them. <laughs> but um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe subscribe yes. sorry um hit the like button but if you have any questions or inquiries please leave a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as possible yes. um but that is up us for us <laughs> that is it for us this week <laughs> we are now going to go and clean up any splatter that may have landed where it should not have in the showroom exactly. and uh, thanks so much for watching see ya bye